known to some as the day after, the day after the Tobago House of Assembly election. And we're wondering how much of his uh, unionized thoughts and energy Watson Duke will be bringing as minority leader. Uh, because some people are saying that the THA could bond down, but um, at the same time, minority leader Jamin still. I don't know if uh, we will be having similar sentiments from David Walker, the financial analyst. But just before that, good morning. My name is DK Roster. Thank you so much for tuning in to our morning program. But Mr. Walker, he was weighing in on the situation last night, and we have called him to do more of the same this morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning to you, DK. Good morning to your listeners. I am very well, as I was telling you off here. I am happily in the northeast of Tobago, which I recommend to anyone. I am pro unashamedly promoting the, the tourism attractions of the northeast of Tobago. All right. No, I don't think anyone expected a 12-0 outcome, but at the same time, 10-2. What are your thoughts on that? It is very difficult for anyone in the current climate to break through the near monopoly of the PNM. And I think we therefore have to recognize the remarkable performance of the PDP being a brand new party coming into the, the electoral situation in Tobago and not just achieving uh, the two seats, but also performing very well in many other seats. So I, from my perspective, I suspect that we are we are witnessing a major change in the political landscape in Tobago. But the outgoing secretary over London, he said that any politician will take a 5-1 majority. Uh, is that gamesmanship? Is that, is, is that just being pragmatic? No, I think he's, he's absolutely correct. Um, any politician would be happy with that. No politician seriously expects to win um, a unanimous verdict. Uh, in the electorate, I, I suspect that they were shocked when they got the 12 mil, you know, happy as they were. But I don't think anybody really expected that even at the time. So that I think as a practical politician, he would have expected that there would be some losses, particularly given the current economic climate and despite what he says, their failure to deliver on a number of issues. Speaking of the newness of the PDP, do you think that was actually part of the shine, part of the allure that people voted more for the PDP than another of the parties that was trying to break through? I, I have my reservations about that. I do believe that they offered something that was genuinely different. And my personal view is that the electorate, and this applies to Trinidad as well, are looking for something that they could believe is going to be different from what they have had before. Now, whether being different will satisfy their ultimate requirement is a judgment that they have to make. And a number of people, quite a number of people, in fact, have obviously made the judgment that it's worth the risk to try something that they, they are almost certain will be different from anything that went before. Do you think a politics of Pekong, as it were, got the better of uh, the Tobago forwards? Because that, the unfortunate statement by the leader came at possibly the worst time where people were thinking about it. Yes, I, I do believe that that is the case. And, and I was very surprised for uh, a practicing attorney um, falling for something like that. Because the stakes had been raised by the Prime Minister you know, who took some, who, who aimed some fairly um, lusty blows at both the forwards and the PDP. The PDP did not respond, but the forwards did. And I was surprised at that coming from what I understand to be an experienced attorney. You know, she should have stayed above the fray, although she has latterly claimed that what she said was said in jest and not seriously. But the point is, people took it as having been said seriously and the damage had been done. It's always easy to say what could have happened if, but if there was no talk about Visine, uh, what, what kind of outcome do you think may have, been, may have been more forthcoming? I don't think there would have been any significant difference, frankly. There was only, you know, I haven't really looked at the data as well as, as I would like to, uh, but there was only one seat, if I remember correctly, where... They were close enough to say that, a, say, a 10% or 15% swing would have gotten them past the post. So that it 
would have taken much more than than um, the absence of that faux pas to get them past the post in any of the seats, based on the data that I have, the limited data I have seen. And one of the other things in looking at the data as well is that a lot of people are talking about vote splitting having been a factor. But the reality is that there is only one seat of the 10 that the PNM has won which would have gone elsewhere had the votes of the two parties been combined, and that was in Belgard and Goodwood. In all the other seats, even if you combined the PDP and the forwards, the PNM would still have won. So for me, the, the vote splitting thing is, it is a factor, but it is not the determining factor. The PNM is easily the dominant party, and anybody who wishes to to make inroads in Tobago really has to somehow eat into the PNM, um, their core vote. And I suspect that that's what's happened in the two seats that the PDP has won. But, but you said that say, people are they... looking for something different. <coughs> but at the same time, last night you were saying that it seems as though there's more of the same and people are still voting along party lines as opposed to looking at issues. What are some of those issues? Well, the big issues, I have my own particular issues, which I am, I am very disappointed didn't take more prominence. For me, perhaps the, the first and most pressing one was the lack of accountability. It's been more than 10 years since the THA has presented audited statements. I have seen a figure computed which says that under the, the reign of, of London, over $30 billion has been spent with no audited statements. Now, for me, that, that is a, a massive issue which should have been discussed. Do you think you that we can go forward doing more of that? And I ask that question because the Prime Minister and the Minister of Finance have said that this cannot continue. Well, they've said it cannot continue in the context of the state enterprises. They have not said it in the context of Tobago. Even in the Tobago um, PNM internal elections for the leadership, it was, never, it was never discussed. So one has to assume, regrettably, that there is no desire, no intention to deal with it on the part of PNM in Tobago, and I'm not hearing anything from PNM in Trinidad. I hope they prove me wrong. I hope that even today, now that the election is out of the way, they feel free to say that they really need to do better with respect to accountability in Tobago. The fact that it is no longer 12 nil, we have a minority leader and we have one who has uh, a unionized energy. Do you think that more can be done, for example, uh, bringing a little more accountability to the Sandals situation in Tobago? I expect him to demand more accountability. He must be thinking forward to the next election in four years' time. That, that's the way... Um, politicians work and uh, I'm sure he's no different. So he's going to be thinking what can I do to improve the lot of Tobagonians but also to, to burnish my credentials as the person who made that happen. So I'm expecting to hear him doing all in his power to hold them to account and, and for that we have to be grateful that we now have two people within the chamber that will hopefully do that whereas we've had none for at least four years. David Walker, thank you very much for both for last night and this morning uh, for giving us more time this morning. This is Good Morning Trinidad and Tobago.